It is 2021, it is January, a new month, a new pile of to be read books to be read, and I couldn't be more excited. Hey friends, I'm Courtney and welcome to The Incessant Bookworm. If you haven't already seen it, I suggest watching the Downbound Books bookstore tour I did before the end of 2020. So this is a bookstore really close to where I live in Cincinnati in the Northside neighborhood. Very eclectic, very cute, small space, but a lot of energy and a lot of fun. Also, feel free to head over to my Instagram and my Twitter accounts where I post a little bit more frequently, more so than just these videos on YouTube, which are once a week. As we are diving into a new year, that might increase, but for now, that will remain once a week, but Twitter and Instagram will definitely be daily. All right, so today I have my To Be Read books and pile for the month of January. So this month is also included in the Read Around the World challenge from January through March. So there's some of the books that I am going to be sharing today that satisfy a few different countries. Also, most of this year I'll be dedicating a lot of my reading to my own TBR shelves, which after I counted after the Christmas holiday, I had over 200 books, but 140 of them are unread which that's a lot. <laughs> and some of them are going to be in this January TBR. So that is the goal is to kind of clear my shelves or just know that the ones that are on my shelves I've read and want to keep. First book I have for you is The Transatlantic Book Club by Felicity Hayes McCoy. And I've read a couple of her books in the past. And this is a ARC or an advanced review copy from Harper Perennial. So this follows two different storylines, a woman from Canada and then her family in Ireland. And she comes over to visit I believe it's her grandmother or some kind of family member who is starting a Skype book club between America or Canada and Ireland. So some old drama comes back into it because of the families were like feuding or something like that. But a book about books, when can you go wrong about that? And the answer is mostly never. But this one is set in Ireland. This isn't on my personal Read Around the World Challenge Bingo card, but if it is on yours, feel free to take this as a suggestion as well. Next book I have is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, and this is on my bingo card as a novel set in Korea. So this spans four different generations, I believe, of immigrants and their stories of potential exile and how they grow as a family from generation to generation. And it is, it's pretty thick, but it's a nice, fun, floppy paperback. This I've seen on so many different bookstagram accounts, different book lists, and just a lot of different book clubs that have been participating in this book. So it also was a National Book Award finalist, so that's fun too. But yeah, I'm looking forward again to expanding my knowledge of different countries. I haven't, as I was going through books I've read that are set in different countries besides the US, there are not too many that I've read that are set in the continent of Asia. So this I'm very excited for just to again expand my cultural knowledge of different countries, specifically in the Asian continent. Also looking at Asia is The Poppy War by R.F. Kong. So this I feel like this has been talked about a lot, especially in 2020, but this is part of a trilogy and I bought this when I was over at the book loft in Columbus, Ohio as one that I just needed to have because I was having a lot of FOMO and it just seemed like an epic sci-fi fantasy young adult book that I've been getting more into. So that I thought would be pretty interesting. So yeah, I've heard my heart will break a lot. I will be shocked, angry, want to throw this book and maybe the other two at the wall at points. I thought about doing a reading vlog for this one, but I feel like that's been overdone, but I'm definitely going to write a review about it and hopefully continue the trilogy if I like this one. Next is We Can Only Save Ourselves by Alice in Wisdom, and this was also an arc sent over from Harper Perennial. This, just based off of the, the cover design as well as the synopsis, is getting me a lot of vibes from The Virgin Suicides, from The Girls by Emma Klein. It has a little bit to do with like a cult following where this girl runs off with this guy to some kind of bungalow, and then there's these other young girls there too that are coming from all different walks of life and they're trying to figure out what the heck's going on. So there's a lot of intrigue with that. I have read The Virgin Suicides and The Girls, and it's just, it's just odd. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it, but I thought this would be an interesting, unique one uh, to start the year with too. All right, next is a very shiny cover. We have The Testing, oop, 
by Joelle Charbonneau. So this was a gift. That's what just fell out um, from my friend Liz at Read by the Color on Instagram. So this she won, I believe, a pack of three of these books from the Cincy Library Friends in Cincinnati, the warehouse they were doing a giveaway over the summer. And I'm just now getting to it. So this is a sci-fi young adult kind of Hunger Games-ish novel, but this has to do with generations competing in this testing to be able to get a better education and to be able to be the leaders of this now destroyed planet that they are living on. So there is some backstabbing, there are some friendships, some loyalties that are tested. So yeah, this is also part of a trilogy. So if this goes well, I'll continue with that too. All right, now we have Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport, and this has been on my shelf for a while. I bought this book when I was in Portland. So Powell's or City of Powell's book, City of Books at Powell's, Powell's City of Books. I'll get it eventually. And this was my one book, surprising, I don't know how I just bought one book, when I was there. So this, I I love minimalism. I like living a minimalist lifestyle. It is possible to be a minimalist bookworm. And I've just adapted that practice of seeing what adds value to my life and everything else can either be donated or thrown out. So this looks at what that looks like in the digital world or digital context with social media being online and having presence there. So looking at how much I'm using that, I know I'm on there a lot and it does affect me mentally, negatively when looking at like stats and like consuming information that may not be correct or that might be upsetting. So I'm excited to look through this. And then finally, a big bestseller from last year, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by B.E. Schwab. So this is one that I plan to do a reading vlog for this month. So I haven't done a reading vlog before. We'll see how it goes. I thought this would be a good one to do since it's been getting a lot of hype and a lot of chatter across the book world and book industry. So this is my first B.E. Schwab that I will be reading. I have A Darker Shade of Magic by her. I think that's more young adult than this story, but this story follows Addie LaRue who seems to go throughout life never being remembered by the people she meets until one day she is recognized or somebody calls her name who she met in a different time or different day. So that I thought would be really interesting. I thought that a lot of people have rated this very highly and have said it's brilliant. And I've heard a lot about B.E. Schwab's work being called brilliant. So this will be my first of hers and hopefully the first of many. This month will also be my first month starting the Always Fully Booked Planner from Little Inklings Designs. So this I was so excited for. I've gotten the novel companion part of this company or this organizer and I want to expand it a little bit more since that didn't have weekly or to-do lists from day to day. So for example, the spread for week to week. So I wanted to have that in there to have my to-do list, but thought I'd show you a little bit of what I have. I need to fill this in, but for the January TBR, I've started a little bit. I'm trying to work on my calligraphy skills. This took me like 25 minutes just to write the title and the, or the, the title of the page and the name of one book. Clearly I have a lot more books than just the one that I want to read for January, but I need to give my hand a rest. So yeah, I'm excited to start filling this in. It also comes with different stats from month to month, as well as what's currently on your shelf, what your goals are. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. It's good to have everything, at least for me, in one spot. I do rely on my Trello board and my digital like Google calendar to keep me on track with things, but there's just something so satisfying about crossing something off or checking something off and making it look pretty. So that's a goal for this month and this year. So those are all the books I plan to read for the month of January. Of course, those are all subject to change. We all know this. Things may come up. Something may not hold my attention, and that's okay. This year is really about me looking at what I currently own and seeing where I can stretch myself a little bit more in my reading when it comes to the Read Around the World Challenge, the Unread Owned Books Challenge by Whitney at the Unread Shelf, and anything else that may come up. So very excited about that. Excited to see what you all have chosen to read for the month of January. Feel free to comment below with any that you're interested in or you plan to read or any of the ones that I've talked about that you've read and you want to give me some, not spoilers, but like heads up or you're going to love it, whatever. So that would be really helpful. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up or comment down below. Feel free to subscribe if you aren't already following for more videos like this and more bookstore tours that I'll be doing throughout the year. 
reading blogs, some fun like listicles or booklets and other kind of things like that. I might try to do a weekly reading blog, not every week, that defeats the whole purpose of calling it a weekly reading blog, but I don't know, I want to do something more present or going more into like the life of a book blogger or bookstagram or a book blogger, so kind of behind the scenes a little bit. So maybe I'll do that. If that's of interest, please let me know. If not, I'll move on to something else. That is fine, but I want to make good content, be excited about what I put out there, also stretch myself in my confidence and my skill set when it comes to making videos. So some of the little goals I have there. I'll list the link below of other goals I have for the year. I wrote a blog post about it. So just excited for a new year. Hoping 2021 is great, better than last year. We're able to do a lot more things that we weren't able to in 2020. If you'd like to support me in a different kind of way, I have my coffee and Amazon wish list listed below in the descriptions as well. And yeah, I hope you all have a great start of the year, great start to January, a great reading month, and I will catch you all later. Happy reading!